We got a real good one. Check this one out. Oh, yeah. Predator Police Chief reverses his res resignation. Predator Police Chief flip flops on his resignation. Police Chief flip flops on his own resignation. Let's put his picture up. This guy is such an interesting, corrupt person. Yes, indeed. Black Mine, Louisiana. The police chief, his name is Kenny Payne, Kenny originally Payne. planned to resign. Why? Because he wanted to avoid criminal charges tied to a case where a woman alleged he wanted oral sex in exchange for charges dropped against her boyfriend. Whoa. This was a I think I heard about this one. So initially, the chief said, ah, you know what? I be damned. You got me. I'm just going to resign to avoid criminal prosecution. And then, according to Mayor Ed Reeves, let's put up the mayor here. Yeah. Check the chief. Up. No longer Here's the mayor. Hmm. Hmm. Kenny said he didn't do it. That's what the mayor said. <laughs> oh, Kenny my God. You got a mayor to, uh, uh, sucking up and back in the blue. Reeves. Wow. Reeves says Chief Payne called him on Tuesday morning to say he was not resigning. Huh. He said at some point in his career he's going to retire, but he's going to do it on his own time <laughs> and on his own oh my god said mayor reeves <laughs> da tony clayton confirmed a grand jury has been convened on november 21st to hear the case uh so the da has said okay uh, i don't give a damn which way this goes we are convening the grand jury we are going to submit the evidence and we will do what this grand jury mandates that's why grand juries especially against cops are important mm -hmm. so when posed a question by wafb's reporter okay. if he believes Payne should resign the mayor said no i think he's doing a pretty good job say what Woo! wow <laughs> did you hear that the mayor reset. No, I think he's doing a pretty good job. Really? Boo! Wow! <laughs> the board of selectmen appointed Payne to serve as interim police chief back in 2015. After police chief Orion Bellato's death, Payne ran for and was elected to the office last year. That same year and has been chief ever since. Now, we're gonna to continue to follow this story because here's what typically happens with allegations like this against men like the chief. You get one grand jury because one person was brave enough to say what actually happened to them, you end up getting more because more people feel empowered to come out. More people start saying, me too. It happened to me too. Yeah. So we will see if there's a pattern of misconduct connected to this police chief. And I can only imagine what would make the mayor support this police chief without any words of support or care for the alleged victim in this case. And remember, the victim has enough evidence to where the DA believes there's some there there. That's why they have continued to push this investigation and convene the grand jury. Ms. Dahl, thoughts here? So essentially a grand jury is the one that is going to decide whether or not there's probable cause to bring a charge. A judge can do that, but this usually does a grand jury in high profile cases like this. So the fact that um, the mayor was so supportive of him, I agree, is a little bit unusual. You would think he would at least say, you know what, we'll wait and see until what the grand jury says. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, maybe there have been complaints before and they've been covered up. You know, I think you think a proper mayor is like, well, well, let's wait till the investigation is over or the trial's over. You know, because people are in this country that have the right of called due process. But the fact that mayor says, "Oh no, I, I think he's doing, do I think he's doing a wonderful job," like, whoa, yeah, tells you, uh, tells you what this mayor does. Yeah, hobnobs the cops in his area.
I mean, that's what happens in institutions. Like you said, usually there's not just the one time. And usually men who do stuff like this have people who are willing to make it easier for them to do it again. So it, I think it's great to like stay on the story and see how it goes. And I'm sure the reason why he flip flopped on the resignation is the DA said, you know, I'm not going to not charge you just because you resigned, which is a ridiculous thing. It shouldn't matter whether or not he resigned to bring the charges. So that was definitely the right call by the DA, but I'm sure that's why he changed his mind. He was hoping if he just quit, the criminal charges were going to be dropped, which is that's not how the criminal law happen. works in our country. Right. Very unlikely. And here's the other dynamic. As long as he remains chief of police, guess who has to pay for his legal defense? Mm. The they, taxpayers. The government does. Yeah. Citizens, taxpayers. Yep. So yep. they're going to have to now foot the bill for his legal defense. This may not be the only charge he ends up fighting. And I will say this as a person who has had many conversations off record with prosecutors who are prosecuting cops and police chiefs or whistleblowers. Typically, there's always a culture of additional knowledge they have that they cannot say on the record. They have, um, they have information that cannot meet the standards of evidence, but they know it, they know it happened, but they're not able to present it in the court of law. And nine times out of 10, when I engage with an individual who is prosecuting a cop, they have so much background information, but they can only bring one out of, let's say five actual things that they've done because of the rules of evidence. Can you speak to those rules of evidence and why sometimes you will see one case significantly prosecuted and you will say, well, goodness, all of that for this one case, but many times there's a lot of background that we don't know. And oftentimes the other, like you would say, alleged victims maybe didn't have enough for a charge, but they're brought in as witnesses to show these prior bad acts, to show motive and intent. And that's how often kind of when somebody like Harvey Weinstein, mm -hmm. you know, he was convicted of only maybe a few women doing things with, but there was many more who testified. And so if you are somebody who's done. Yeah, or kind of like Jerry Sandusky when he was like, yeah. And, it, and unfortunately, his demise ruined the, uh, the career and the image of Joe Paternal at that. Multiple bad things. Even if they can't charge you for all those things, it makes it much easier for them to bring a conviction. And your point about the police union, I think, was so great. I think that the police union has to represent a police officer because it's during their job. But the city should, the police, if the city pays for it, I think the police union should pay for damages. And I think that would be how they would kind of self enforce a lot of their ethics, which they don't have. We've talked about that they should have ethics well said um, i advocate also for police officers to have malpractice insurance similar to that of medical doctors and psychologists etc um, unfortunately now the bill is foot it, it will be um, supplied and paid by tax payers yep <laughs> not too shocked that this uh police chief versus resignation but i am very appalled and shocked that the mayor says, oh, I think he's doing a really good job. When there's already a lawsuit and a case going to the grand jury like that. And you know there's probable cause and there's evidence, not just hearsay. Anyways, I'm out here, my job. Peace out.